fam, let's talk about the best, best freaking cabinet picks ever to come. Yeah. So um, basically <laughs> what Joe Biden is doing is he's bringing everybody from the uh, Obama administration and he just tapped NSA Susan Rice uh, for a key position and is bringing in everybody else. So um, let's go over a little bit of, of the information here because it's a lot. So the four finalists, uh, he has four finalists for attorney general, right? Two of the most popular ones are Merrick Garland, who was supposed to be the, the Supreme Court uh, nominee from Obama, and then uh, 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 what, Doug Jones, who is the senator. He recently lost his uh, yeah. position. So he's leaving. He also had that whole debacle, um, which we're going to go over in a minute. Um, he also appointed Dennis McDon McDonough for Secretary of Veteran Affairs, Tom Vilsack for Agricultural Secretary, and Marsha Fudge for Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. And like I said, Susan Rice, for who was former, former National Security under Obama, she is now uh, being tapped for the director of the Domestic Policy Council. So it will be a lot better for, I guess, uh, the world, depending on who he picks, it probably will be a worse person. <laughs> uh, he also announced, Kath, announced Catherine Tai, who she's, she was the one that oversaw the trade uh, enforcement for China during the Obama years. And um, we're going to go over who some of them are, because as you start looking at these people, you start realizing really quickly that, um, well, they suck. They're all, they're all NSA, CIA. They're all really um, consultant class. It is status quo as it ever gets. And in a, in a lot of ways, that's more dangerous than somebody that's blatantly going to tell you what's going on. And that is the Biden administration. So Garland, you know, he was nominated by uh, Obama for SCOTUS. He went to Harvard Law. He has actually tons of Republican support. Um, most of the information about him just touts about how much support he has from Republicans. He is a uh, somebody that is bipartisan uh, across the board. Then you have Doug Jones, of course, who lost the Alabama race recently, like I said. Um, and he, he, my bad, my bad, sorry, trying to share with mom. Um, he did legal work for this, uh, Birmingham politician, uh, foundation mm -hmm. and he, uh, let me just read a little bit of this. He's the one who beat Roy Moore. The, the, yeah. The guy the, that uh, was the, the judge that had like pedophilia charges against them yeah. and whatnot. And. Um, and I'm just going to read a little bit of this. Um, he did legal work for a corrupt Democratic Politicians Foundation, and this money was um, allegedly funded for bribes. As recently as this year, Doug Jones had uh, an, they, they had an ethics disclosure findings that found that he worked as an attorney for the foundation that was caught up in unfolding criminal investigations. He has a lot of uh, baggage as well. He also um, got called out for uh, by child sex trafficking victims uh, for his hypocrisy and, and blasting Roy Moore because apparently he um, there was a situation with a woman who sued the University of Alabama of Birmingham. And this was over sexual abuse in 2001. And she called out the Alabama Democratic U.S. candidate then, Doug Jones, for hypocrisy for his role as a defense attorney on behalf of the university. So he he doesn't really have a great reputation. And those are of for attorney general, which I mean, nothing new. It's not like uh, Donald Trump picked anybody that was amazing. But I really want to get to like the crux of the Biden cabinet because yeah. Dennis, uh, what? I was going to say something? real quick yeah. that uh, Roy Moore was one of those people. His voting record was along the lines of Republicans almost yeah. every single time. Oh, yeah. Like they put it out. Remember, they convinced Roy you. Moore or uh, excuse me, Doug Jones. Doug Jones they, they, yeah. they convinced you to vote for Doug Jones and that whole uh, Alabama race. Yeah. And then he goes and just votes. Uh, you know, he's not progressive at all in any means whatsoever. And he vo voted mostly with the Republicans on 90 percent of his votes. It was ridiculous. Um, and then Dennis uh, McDonough is the, the nominee for the Secretary of Veteran Affairs. He was an, a, a former Obama chief of staff, but he is not a veteran. He has never been in the military. 
Uh, so he it, people were pushing back on that fact like they wanted somebody that had actually been a veteran. And um, of course, the Biden uh, team nominated somebody that's not a, be- a veteran. He, of course, like I said, longtime aide to President Obama from 2013 to 2017. Uh, he was chosen uh, reportedly because of his ability to navigate crises and sort through the complex morass of government programs that can support veterans. Literally bullshit. He, hmm. he was chosen because he was a, the point guy to um, Barack Obama. So um, <laughs> th- this is why people are pushing back against his nomination. And if you look down here, McDonough, like I said, he didn't serve as a military. And um, yeah, he's just a guy that doesn't deserve to really have that position. A lot of veterans are uh, pushing back. None of these are have been confirmed, but none of them. Um, I think all of them need Senate confirmation, except Susan Rice, who, who we're going to get to in a minute. Tom Vilsack, to me, is one of the worst picks, fam. Tom Vilsack, if you recall, he is like the Mr. Monsanto guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, he is nominated right now for the agriculture secretary. He is the former secretary of agriculture under the Barack Obama administration. And he's a Monsanto goon (laughs) as a USDA secretary. He actually failed to protect the food workers and did very little to combat the agency's racist policies. And also champion the industrial agricultural over the family farmers. So if you don't know, and this is one of the good reasons why we're vegan, uh, uh, big AG or big agriculture is like horrible because they basically make uh, factory farming the way to go. And they basically make it so you're mass producing all of this meat and all of this um, just... These animals are are produced in, in or as food in a massive way, and the small farmers have been screwed by big yeah. agriculture, which is why like some people who do eat meat are always saying buy local, buy from your farmers. It's because of of big agriculture. Yeah. Um, and he's also a corporate lobbyist and uh, anti climate change, and like I said, big AG and uh, FoxNews dot com pretty much pointed out. Um, his failures when it comes to the farmers farmers um are i'm obviously going to be outraged by this decision because um he's been under fire for over one million uh for a a million dollar a year job with this group that was funded by mandatory fees from struggling dairy farmers so he's profiting off of the dairy industry that really screwed up a lot of these farmers and um there was this really great art article on his support from big agriculture. So Tom Vilsack, um, according to the prospect.org, after the election, Obama's USDA under Vilsack's control and the Justice Department set out a five city listening tour of farm country, hearing stories about big AG price discrimination, hearing all these farmers that were upset. But after the hearings, there was no laws, no enforcement taken. Nothing was changed. And more mergers were actually approved. And um, Obama's team asserted that their hands were tied by antitrust laws. And according to uh, this person, he did nothing. And Vilsack did nothing. And the Department of Justice did nothing. They totally betrayed us. This created a lack of trust that has now spread to both parties. If Biden broke with this past and brought in new advisors with a commitment to protecting family farms, that trust begins to be rebuilt. But instead, the Biden team has returned to the same old corporate AG well. So this isn't just affecting uh, the usual sector like, oh, he had just racist policies because he did as well. But we're talking about the working class of of, of white farmers in, in middle America. We're talking about, uh, you know, people that have worked in these industries. And if you recall the reasons why Donald Trump was elected, he was elected because of the failure of neoliberalism. And this is a part of it. And Biden is just bringing it back. So that goes to tell you who the hell are we going to elect next time on the right? because. This is just going to create more uh, of, of backlash. In addition um, to his role um, at disappointing farmers while at uh, USDA, people point to him taking a job as president and CEO, like I was mentioning, of the U.S. Dairy Export Council. As soon as his term with Obama was done, he went and took this job, million plus dollar job. 
The council's members include large corporate dairy interests, which have dominated the industry and destroyed family farms. About 4,600 dairy farms have closed every year, with some dairy companies now including a list of suicide prevention hotlines in their envelopes with farmers' checks. Hmm. Fam, what does that make you feel as a vegan? Like that, that dairy and big and big, you know, AG is such a like massive, massive issue and it's hurting and screwing all these small farmers. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, there's a lot of people who would say, well, you know, if you use the local stuff, you use the organic farmers, you eat the organic eggs. Yeah. Everything's OK. But now we're on this mass just pipeline, this chain of just like getting these big farmers and just. It's disgusting the way they do things. And we understand, you know, yeah. we've seen this before. We've watched all the videos. So it's it's horrifying. And the fact that the left is back for pushing. I thought the left was supposed to be for the little guy. Well, we're mitigating damage. Right? We are mitigating damage. Sorry, guys. Keep mitigating damage. Go ahead. So Matt Stoller posted <clears throat> this uh, tweet. He said, uh, Tom Vilsack is hated by both rural whites, whose livelihood he crushed, and black Americans towards whom his department was actively racist. That's a strong R block and strong D block united in dislike. <laughs> but he's friends with Biden and Des Moines upper class lawyers like him. So I guess that's all that matters. Um, and this is just in reference to David Day and posting how uh, Tom Bilsack, the AG department, signals writing off rural families in favor of agribusiness. Yeah. Um, and so this would be a huge mistake. Everybody, even even some of his goons are telling Biden, like, hey, this isn't a good idea. You're going to piss a lot of people off. But this is a really good thread by Kevin Gostola. And I have to point this one out because um, he listed all everything you need to know regarding Monsanto, basically. So this is Tom Bilsack, okay? He's known as actually Mr. Monsanto. And, uh, of course, like we said, he was Secretary of Agriculture with Obama. But, um, basically, Bronco Marsetic summarized how Vilsack earned the moniker Mr. Monsanto while in the Obama administration. He looked out for the interests of agriculture and biotech corporations, especially when it came to MGOs. And I'll just read a little bit of this here. Uh, Tom Vilsack's current president and CEO of the U.S. Uh, Export Council, Vilsack was plucked from his seat as a biofuel and biotech friendly Iowa governor to serve as the president Barack Obama's agriculture sec secretary. While his tenure wasn't uniformly bad, Vilsack resisted Republican attacks on food stamps and upped federal support for organic food. He angered progressive groups by letting poultry factories self-regulate, speeding up the approval process for GMO crops, shelving new regulations on agriculture at the industry's behest, and stepping into the craft and industry-friendly national GMO labeling bill intended to replace a pioneering stricter standard in Vermont. The move helped him um, earn the moniker Mr. Monsanto and the enmity of many Bernie Sanders supporters at a time in 2016 when he was shortlisted as one of Hillary's potential running mates. So he's always been uh, one of the people. He was also, um, he like, he caved into biotech uh, genetically. And we know Monsanto's really bad, uh, but he also continued to approve anything they did without any sort of restrictions you know like when it comes to gmos you have to label everything and he c completely fought against that he also was um for the merger of bayer and monsanto which is one of the most destructive things uh, that we've had like the largest i think um one of the largest companies merging with uh, one of the uh, bioengineering companies in monsanto is one of the most <laughs> dangerous things you can have here so um yeah. Yeah. These people have been running their game for a long, long time. There yeah. was connections to Bayer and Monsanto before Monsanto was even Monsanto back mm -hmm. in the days. I looked at some stuff when, you know, and also the Dark Act. If we talk about the Dark Act, right, that was signed during, I believe, Barack Obama's t presidency. So, I mean, here it goes. We're returning to the glory days by mitigating damage. So I, I urge you guys to read that whole thread. It's very informative. Um, and, yeah, that's that's just Bill sick. And he's just, you know, he's... Again, a typical Obama guy. And we had Marsha Fudge. And Marsha Fudge is going to be the Secretary of Housing and Development. Now, it's this one's mixed because a lot of progressives unknowingly were cheering for her. Why? Oh, because she's a woman of color. Okay, so we have, uh, according to Politico, uh, she's going to be the... Um, in charge of housing and urban and development, which is kind of like, why are you putting her in charge of urban developing it's a little bit you know kind of like i don't want to say racist but it's a little bit kind of like 
there are, you could have put her some, somewhere else but she is making her case for for uh she was making her case for agriculture secretary but she didn't get it um one of the things about her that i want to point out is that she's a status quo politician as they come she backed senator kamal harris during the democratic presidential primary and after harris dropped out she worked behind the scenes to secure biden's victory and of course um this included urging Democratic majority whip Jim Clyburn to go public with his endorsement of Biden before the South Carolina primary. Bernie Sanders subsequently lost that primary. She um, she said, I, I do know there are many people who are lobbying. My name was mentioned even before this election. I've been very, very loyal to the ticket and I will remain loyal to the ticket. Hmm. I just want to say, do you want somebody in there that's loyal to joe biden to to the democratic party because it's it's irrelevant because joe biden isn't going to be the the president for long we we know this but it's is do you really want another loyal democrat in there and i uh, she's if you all it takes is to look at her twitter for five seconds to know that she's a typical establishment politician um right over here on her twitter she says the cares act prevented millions of families from falling into poverty yet much of that relief has now disappeared poverty is spiking across america and it's only going to get worse it doesn't have to be this way our communities need help now so she's uh propping up the cares act of course which was the largest transfer of wealth it beat what happened in 2009 the largest transfer of wealth from the the, the poorest sectors all the way to the the top one percent um like i said she was pro kamala harris so i was a little bit all, all weirded out when nina turner was thanking her um for her uh nomination nina turner said congratulations marcia fudge on being nominated as uh to the hud secretary our country faces a historic crisis in housing from evictions to lack of affordability the challenges ahead require someone who understands the enormity of the problems facing millions of americans and i i was a little turned off by that why is nina turner uh congratulating a democrat that's a status quo establishment democrat that supported kamala harris that supports joe biden that did everything she could behind the scenes to elect joe biden i'm yeah. just a little bit weirded yeah. out so does that mean like nina turner is going to be doing the same type of thanking if she gets in there as a democrat like this is why i don't support the democratic party or anybody running in it because then they do this shit like and they continue building the democratic party up and yeah. they continue building up these players. Yeah. Well, uh, I ain't got much to say because I just want to start talking and all just, I mean, why do people buy it? Why do people accept it? Why does it yeah. continue to go on? I think because they see the elections and they think these elections are really, they're solid. And since they don't, you know, look at these elections, I mean, the elections are the, are the vessel for them to continue to keep holding on to their power yeah. and doing what they're doing. So, I mean, it's just sad because I'm sitting here thinking, I'm looking at all these things and I'm like, look at who they're putting back in. I mean, that's what we know what, what was going on. Yeah. The establishment just wanted to get all their people. They wanted things to go back to the way they were before Donald Trump was here, before the great agitator came along. And they're doing it. And, they're, and, and you know, we have people saying what? Mitigating damage. We have people like uh, AOC and the squad saying, look at the Republicans. But look what the Democrats are doing. Look who they're putting back in charge. I mean, Mr. Monsanto. They should make a jacket for him that says that. I mean, it's just disgusting. It's disgusting, and it gets worse because when we talk about U.S.-China aggression, it's one of the bigger deals, right? Yeah. And Catherine Tai is, of course, the first woman of color to be nominated for this position. Um, and she is going to be, she's nominated for a U.S. trade representative. So I'm just going to say right off the bat, expect anti-China trade policies, but intersectional imp imperialism, because that's, at least that's what we have to look forward to um she was uh she's currently is the, the the top democratic trade council for the house and ways uh, means committee and she oversaw the trade enforcement during uh in china during the obama administration and when it, what she believes in is um basically more aggression towards china when it comes to trade she was a proponent of of Na of revamping nafta into what it became under the trump administration mm -hmm. but it, it was largely basically the same thing i mean it was basically the same thing um and she she came from capitol hill she was nominated to a role in 2017 after serving three years 
in in the Housing and Waste Committee. She has the experience, however, she uh, uh, played a key role, like I said, in negotiating the trade policy with Democrats in the United States, Mexico, Canada agreement, which came under the Trump administration or the USMCA agreement. And um, again, you can expect more anti-China uh, stances when it comes to trade um, and when it comes to of uh, the the ac economic policies that the Biden administration is going to put. And Judy Chu, Judy Chu, Pasta's favorite uh, representative, is uh, excited about her. She said, I've worked closely with Catherine Tai on trade issues and know she is exceptionally qualified to serve as our USTR and as chair of the CAPACAC. I'm thrilled to have such an incredible American, Asian, Pacific Islander woman at the cabinet level to inspire others. <laughs> um, and of course, they're focusing on the fact that she's the first AAPI <laughs> But they're they're also completely, um, you know, not pointing out that she her policies are going to be very much anti-China. If you if you read her record, it's going to be a lot of, uh, a t of of tariffs, a lot of taxes, a lot of things when it comes to the, the trade in China. And we don't need that. We absolutely don't need any more of that. Um, and finally, bam, Susan Rice. Mm -hmm. Susan R is my favorite. She's going to be the director of the Domestic Policy Council after getting shot down again. Uh, for a uh, foreign policy position. She was very excited. She said that uh, she said, I am humbled and excited to call this to serve to by this call to serve. The scale of the challenges ahead demands a government that works for all Americans. We must restore trust in government through strong and equitable domestic policy that builds back better here at home. That phrase, build back better, they're all saying it. I just want to point that out. That's like a, a deep state thing. Like they're all saying build back better. Uh, it's the new thing that they're saying. It's a new um, catchphrase? Yeah, because it's not, they're, they're really, they basically just told everybody we're not going to go back to before. They're calling it the new normal. They're saying we're going to build back better. This is why, you know, when uh, Whitney Webb talks about the, the, um, the merging of the technocratic um superpowers with with our government like this is part of it this is this goes right along the lines and just a reminder uh, i did a graphic susan rice helped bring about the libyan slave trade via u.s intervention mm -hmm. she also had that benghazi video that went viral where she was using cia talking points and flat out lying about what happened she pushed for proxy wars in syria she supported Israel's massacre and siege of Gaza. She is pro-U.S. sanctions on Iran. She has said so constantly. She is anti-China as it gets, pushing for more hawkish relations. And, of course, she, uh, had, uh, uh, she failed when it came to dealing with the Rwanda genocide, which, you know, Hotel Rwanda is a great movie that Pasta loves. Um, and regarding Benghazi, she said defended herself by saying i relied solely and squarely on the information provided to me by the intelligence community and uh, she said i made clear that the information provided to me was preliminary and that our investigations would give us a definitive answers would you say that that's even true i mean she she flat out was flat out lying, lying. like she literally <laughs> said that something that wasn't true she made up that the that the attacks were from protesters when it yeah. wasn't the case. Um, Didn't she say it was about the cartoon or something? I, I can't even she, remember. She made up that it was about <laughs> the uh, protesters. Um, and yet people still say that she's extremely qualified. Um, Rice did win accolades for pushing the UN Security Council to adopt new Iran and North Korean sanctions. That's right. She was praised for adopting more sanctions, helping secure the toughest UN measures to date against those two countries over their nuclear programs. She also played a key role in negotiating uh, the resolution on Libya. And um, Madeleine Albright on, on Susan Rice said this, because Madeleine Albright and Susan Rice knew each other since she was a little girl. Susan Rice knew um, Madeleine Albright since she was four years old. She's like, comes from an elite um, upper class family. Madeleine Albright said, we often travel together and I look her I took her advice very seriously. Um, and this is Madeleine Albright, who served as UN ambassador from 93 to 97 and secretary of state, of course, from 97 to 2001. She said, I think she is one of the smartest people I know in her national security issues. 
if Madeline Albright compliments you, that is a terrible thing. That is like that is like the devil complimenting you. She is like she's a good Satan Padawan itself. Yeah, <laughs> I conditioned right? her since she was four. No, it, so <laughs> Madeline Albright wouldn't be a, a Jedi. She would be the like Count Dooku or something. The Sith. Like, the Sith Lord. Sith Lord. Yeah, the, she is the Sith Lord. Um, and so just more on Benghazi at w uh, w dot anti empire dot com. They basically talked about the. Um, in 2012, the attack on the U.S. diplomatic campground in Benghazi. Um, Rice was on the Sunday morning talking show reciting the CIA talking points. And based, she said that they were based on intelligence assessments at the time, but turned out to be incomplete and misleading. And she was accused of being incompetent, untrustworthy, and soft peddling terrorism. She has also been criticized for her decision to unmask the identities of senior Trump officials, which Trump called a crime. She um, she had a great influence, like I said, on bombing uh, decisions to bomb Libya and Syria. And even Obama had to push back in that case. She said in each case, I would argue she was coming out against either against Obama's clear cut instincts or preferences in White House meetings or in a situation where he was hesitant and that she was part of the pressure he received from a coalition of hawks and the administration. Um and she describes this, and this is this is Barack, Mr. Drone Warfare, Mr. Took Us From Two to Seven Wars, Obama. And she makes him look like a little boy when it comes to how hawkish she was. She said, ultimately, we would fail to garner the necessary support for congressional authorization to use force. Republicans and Democrats had acted precisely as I predicted. Ironically, it turns out I was right about the politics, but President Obama was right about policy. Without the use of force, we ultimately achieved a better outcome than I had imagined. So she was pushing Obama to actually uh, go and, and fully set out a full on attack in, in Syria and Libya. And even Obama had to say no. Well, we won't use that kind of force. So that just goes to show you the kind of person that is going to be now in charge of our domestic policy. It's so much better for us. I'm so excited. <laughs> Listen, this is what they wanted. They, they wanted everything to get back to the status quo. They mm -hmm. were so disgusted. What happened with Trump? They just wanted to get all their people back in there. And it looks like they're going to accomplish that if things go through. Um, and it's kind of disgusting. I mean, I, I'm sitting here like feeling like hopeless. Like, what do we do now? Like, it's just like, here we go. It's back to because under Obama, things did not get better. They got worse. They got worse. You know what I'm saying? People and got pissed off. people, you know, it's just a, he's putting in all the people that drove uh, Biden's putting in all the people that drove people to Trump. Yeah. So what, much. what what do you like? What is this going to do? <clears throat> is it going to push everything more towards the right? And like right now, like I've told many leftists, there's a a right wing populist movement that's developing and like that can also be a dangerous thing depending on where they take it like depending on where it goes it could be dangerous it could be it could be a good thing where some people join forces with a left wing populist movement or whatever it is but it could also be a very bad thing if if people feel like oh democrats are so bad let's go to the right and then boom like that's what you have you have that dangerous because you have if you have the what the working class right whether it's white or whether it's black or whether it's latino the working class angry at the status quo and you have a two-party system that makes it impossible for people to go outside the duopoly people are going to choose to go to the right and um this is why donald trump got so much of the white working class the farmers all these people that got screwed by factories in michigan that's part of it. And mm. so by putting people from the Obama administration back in, you're putting the same conditions back in that led to the election of Donald Trump. And so you're going to get a worse person, maybe more competent, maybe more um, more angry with 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 the way that people were cheated. And, and this election was rigged. It, it's just going to increase that movement. Well, I think that's going to move to what's more anti-establishment and what the Democrats are doing are just going establishment is AF. That's it. I mean, they're right. But pushing every single bit of establishment type of people, these career politicians that they're putting back into play that were there before. So but you can I mean, have an anti-establishment right that is like anti-immigrant and is anti uh anti-black and anti like 
like social issues too you can have that and that can be dangerous too because if you look at throughout history at what happened um with the 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 development of hitler hitler got the white working class because he helped them like hitler, when, when it came to that he was extremely progressive when it came to climate when it came to all these things he just didn't like jewish people yeah. and and that that is something that can absolutely develop and happening so that's what i'm saying to the left like if you want to actually combat the the right wing populism that's developing, you need to 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 embrace the populism on the left with anti establishment attacking the security state, attacking the military industrial complex, attacking the, the overall the deep state, the CIA, all these all these institutions. Otherwise, the fight is only going to be on this side, and it's going to be difficult to garner uh, everybody uh, together against that because only one ideology is going to have the, the the forefront. So, it, whenever you're fighting against the right. You, 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 without like the Democrats keep us from actually being able to have this discussion. Yeah. So, yeah.